first, let's um, open our Bibles to the book of Luke. Luke, the first chapter, and I'm going to read verses 26 to 33. Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 through 20 to 33. And then you have it, it reads as follows. Now, in the sixth month of, and this is the Amplified I'm reading from. Now, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and eminent and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, which is Israel, forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no in. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for life, health, and strength, Father God. We thank you for your loving kindness, your patience, your forgiveness, your temperance with us, Father God, your peace, your joy, everything that we benefit as a byproduct of a relationship with you, God, we just show you gratitude for right now, God. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus, is there anything unlike you in our lives, any unconfessed sin, any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, God? Expose it, reveal it, and remove it, God. Help us so that we can live like you called us to live. Help us to obey, Father God. Help us to trust you. Help us to, to, to just listen to you, Father God. And let us just not be seduced or led astray by the voice of others, God. But let us live according to your will, Father God. Let us live according to your principles, Father God, that we develop the character necessary to triumph in the world that you have placed us in for such a time as this, Lord. Lord, now hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, I read to you guys from the book of Luke pretty much the story of how the angel came and told her that she would give birth to the Messiah. And a lot of us know the rest of this here story. But the thought that I want you guys to really grab onto, young people, older people, everybody, I want you to really grab onto this, that there is no Christmas without Christ. There is no Christmas without Christ. So today, as we sit here and we're coming to the close and the end of another holiday season, the end of the year, and many of us find ourselves in that same routine, doing that thing that we do every year from Thanksgiving till January 1st. We're caught up in the spirit of the traditions or the spirit of the season or the habits that we practice every year and we get hung up on hanging decorations we get wrapped up in getting presents and many of us become moved by the music and the melodies of the moments in these months the holiday season the holiday season i be you all know i drive my car every day i am so over 
holiday music. I have to turn it on. I, I, like, <laughs> even Donnie Hathaway has had enough is enough. <laughs> enough is enough. But uh, so, some people just love Christmas timey music. And they just, every, some, they, they have this, there's a song that goes, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And and, 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 and I don't want to like ruin it for you because this is absolutely indeed a season for us Christians to be jolly. Yeah. We should be jolly as long as our reason for being jolly isn't based in folly. Did you hear that? We can be jolly as long as our reason isn't based in folly. So I don't want to be the Grinch that stole Christmas but um, I want you to understand that there is no power in the universe that can really steal what Christmas truly is. There is no power in the universe. There is no cutoff notice, no eviction notice. There is nothing that can really steal what Christmas truly is. If you know what Christmas truly is, and we're going to teach a little bit, and I don't want to ruin it for you, but I want you to have understanding. I want you to really understand what we're celebrating in two days. Amen? Um, many of us were born into a false understanding about Christmas. And this is what I was talking about in referencing where I was saying, I don't know where we go from here, but I do know how we got here. And I want to, can I talk to y'all a little bit about how we got here, just so you can speak intelligently and you can govern yourself accordingly in the future. Um, but all of us were born into a false understanding about Christmas. Um, but I want you to know today that there is no Christmas right. without Christ. That's right. See, Christmas isn't about trees. Let's start with that. Um, the decorating of the Christmas tree is actually taken from a Druidic practice as well as the colors red, green, and white. Mm. They're a part of the Druid um, celebration for the winter solstice. Um, so Christmas isn't about trees. Christmas is about Christ. Yeah. Christmas isn't about the lights. I know a lot of you hear the, the term winter solstice. What the winter solstice actually is, it's the celebration of light and the rebirth of the sun, the S-U-N, right. which the light decorations represent. So when you see the lights, they're symbolic of the celebration of light and the S-U-N. Think about it. Christmas is a time where it's cold. Right. So in their belief system, the Druids and a whole lot of other, um, the Wiccans, they believe that the sun is recharging. The sun goes cold and now it's getting warmed up again. Yeah. This is the celebration that they practice, the winter solstice. <laughs> I just want I just I just want y'all to understand when you know you're decking your halls and you're hanging your lights. Like I said, I don't want to be a joy killer, but I want you to understand where this stuff comes from because the reality is, as a Christian, people will throw up in your face your celebration. And I need you to be able to understand and tell them intelligently, I know where this came from, but the reason I celebrate Christmas is Christ. Amen? Amen. And I can't I, I I'm separating some things right now. <laughs> Christmas. <coughs> hmm. Christmas isn't about Santa. Nope. Christmas isn't about Santa. The modern day Santa is a blend, watch this, of false gods. Worshipped historically. Saturn, the Roman god of the harvest. Kronos, the Greek god also known as Father Time. The Holly King, Celtic god of the dying year. Father Ice or Grandfather Frost, the Russian god of winter. And there's a couple more. All of the watch, all of those are a blend, false gods that have become Santa. Christmas is not about reindeer or magical sleigh. Y'all know Thor? We all know Thor. We all know Thor. But in Norse mythology, Thor, the god of the sky, rides in a chariot pulled by goats. What? Christmas is not about a sleigh drawn by reindeers. Yeah, I see your jaw open. You're like, this has to be studying. Yeah, has to be yeah, studying. Yeah, because I want y'all to understand. When y'all, like, I'm going to tell you, this thing messed me up. I was driving around Philly, and I start seeing all these symbols. I start seeing all this stuff, and I'll be like, man, 
We are, um, uh, and, and we were born into it. We were born into these traditions, and I just want to get this right. Finally, watch this, and, and don't y'all don't 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 get your don't get your feelings hurt. But Christmas isn't even about getting stuff. Christmas isn't even about getting stuff. Hey, y'all know, y'all know. You like stuff. I like stuff. I have no problem with stuff. Y'all know, y'all can always say that. Pastor don't got no problem with stuff. But listen, watch this. The gift giving aspect comes from the belief in a spirit called Tomti. Tomti is a Norse land spirit believed to give gifts to children at this time of year. All of this stuff, all of these practices originate from multiple religious practices that have nothing to do with Christ. As I was studying and preparing for the day, and they were they, they were saying um, putting the winter solstice back into Christmas, they said get a tree and call it a winter solstice tree, because that's what it really is. It's not a Christmas tree. I, listen, and, and I, I know some of us who like that. My mom used to make me decorate the tree every year, but well, we were born into it. We're born into it. No, you know the Bible tells us study to show yourself approved of work, but need it not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. Some of this stuff you got to go back and look like why do we really do this stuff? And come to find out that this was never the intention or the purpose of what we're celebrating in this season. What the believer is, so the world can celebrate whatever they want. The Russians can can celebrate Grandfather Frost and and the the Norse can celebrate Thor and and and, and Frozen Men, etc. But for the believer, we have to always be reminded that without Christ, there is no Christmas. These practices were wrongly mixed into celebration by man, but they should have never been accepted by believers. Y'all know we study in that book of Judges. And over and over again, where the people of God mess up is when they begin to accept and practice the worldly beliefs. They begin to accept and worship the gods of the world. And God distinctly told them, don't do it. Right. So, listen, many of us, because of our ignorance, have actually been celebrating the winter solstice and honoring false gods more than actually focusing on the reason God gave us to celebrate. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Christmas for the believer is supposed to be a celebration of the birth of Christ. Christian for the believer is supposed to be a celebration for a birth, the birth of Christ. I'm not, and, and again, I'm not trying to be a joy kill, but we spend more time making our Christmas list than celebrating the birth of Christ. We stress out over how we're going to get this and that instead of celebrating the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. That is so worthy of celebrating. Yes. It's so like like it's really it's it, it's if you couldn't celebrate anything else, the birth of it, it, it should be the one of the two, one of the two highlights of your year as a born again child of God. The other one being Resurrection Sunday. But there, 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 is, there is no way that we should ignore or minimize the birth of Christ. Because if he had never been born, there would have never been a Christ to sacrifice for the redemption of our sins. And, and, and there would be no way for us to be reconnected with the Father. There will be no hope for our souls. This is why we celebrate. This is why we celebrate the birth of Christ. It is his arrival to fulfill this purpose that we celebrate. It was the purpose of Christ to enter this world and become one of us that he could deliver us from our sins. John 3.16, everybody knows. You see the side of the football games, and the basketball game. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It is because of Christ that we have a right to the tree of life. And we should understand and remember that on the day we celebrate this Christmas, Jesus came to earth as a man. But he was not an ordinary man. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus was not an ordinary man. John 1, verses 1 through 4, talks about the deity of Christ. It says, in the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. And then it jumps down to verse 14. And it says, and the word Christ became flesh and lived among us. And we actually saw his glory. Glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father. The Son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind who is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. This is why we celebrate Jesus coming. And it wasn't just by happenstance or a coincidence because this day, back over 2,000 years ago, was prophesied that he would come. He would come. Let, let me show you how we have to acknowledge that this is the Lord and Savior's day. I don't want to call it a holiday, but I, I want to call it the anniversary of his coming. It's the anniversary of his coming that we celebrate. We celebrate marriage anniversaries. We celebrate job anniversaries. In February, we're going to celebrate the church anniversary. But the most important anniversary that is for humanity is the anniversary of when Christ arrived on the scene. Yeah. And it was prophesied. They said it was coming. You know how when a woman is with child, they give them a, a date? Let me, <laughs> Jesus' birth was prophesied long before Mary was even, Mary was conceived. In the Old Testament, in the book of Micah, five, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, it reads, But as for you, Bethlehem, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. They're talking about Jesus, the one that's coming out of Bethlehem. The story that we hear about Jesus born in Bethlehem. It's talking about him way back in the book of Micah. Then in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Prophesy in the Old Testament. Then in the book of Isaiah, chapter, chapter 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The birth of Jesus was prophesied. Then the prophecy came to fruition on the day that we celebrate as Christmas. Without keeping Christ in Christmas, without focusing on Christ in Christmas, you just have a pagan celebration, worshiping things that God created, that God controls, that God gives, and that God can take away. Like without Christ in it, you just got some temporary stuff. You think about you think about it at its core. Think about it at its core and how we celebrate Christmas. We get all work. What, what are you? What is your? What is your? What is your December twenty sixth like? What is your December twenty sixth like? Like right? after. Uh, on December 25th, you wake up early. You wait for your parents to come. They make you might make you clean up. Might make you might make you wait. Might torture you. I don't know my parents. My mom used to torture us. December 20th, don't touch nothing. Don't clean this whole house. <laughs> you, know, you know, don't do anything. <laughs> but then after the 25th, what what, what what happened? It was over. You to build up to that day. The stress, the anxiety, the robber right. for Peter, the pay Paul, all of that, so that everybody could have a happy day. And hopefully you remember to pray somewhere in there. You squeeze a little bit of Jesus into that day. But without Christ in Christmas, I want y'all to understand this, young people, 
I want you to understand this. Without Christ in Christmas, you don't have anything but a fleeting moment. A fleeting moment. You got to understand that, see, and this is why you should celebrate the Christ in Christmas. So in this season, we celebrate the arrival of our Redeemer because without Christ, there is no Christmas. And this season, we should celebrate the arrival of our Savior because without Christ, there is no Christmas. So in this season, we should, separate, we should celebrate the arrival of our healer. The arrival of your healer. For y'all who are sick and got afflictions in your body, this is a reason to celebrate. This is when Jesus came. He can, Jehovah Rapha, he can heal my body. In this season, we should celebrate the one who defends us when the devourer comes to destroy us. This is the reason we celebrate Christmas. This is the arrival of our defender. We celebrate our refuge, the place that we can hide, the place that we can comfort. He is our strong tower. He is our fortress. These are the things that you celebrate. This was the day that our protector came into the See, in this season, you can celebrate the arrival of your joy for all of the chaos and all of the distress. You remember that Jesus is your joy in this season. You can celebrate the arrival of your peace. For those of you who never had no peace, maybe you need to celebrate Jesus a little bit and watch some peace and some order and some structure come into your life. In this season, you can celebrate the arrival of your strength. So when you feel weak, when you feel like you can't take it, when you feel powerless, you know that Jesus came to be strong in your infirmity in your affliction in your bondage Jesus will give you the power and the grace to stand and to plow for it. in this season you can celebrate the arrival of your Lord the one who lords over you the one that rules over you the one who governs over you in this season you can celebrate the arrival of your king hallelujah your king the one who provides for you the one who lays down the law the one who protects you in this season you can celebrate the arrival of your God you don't have to wait anymore celebrate Celebrate those things. Don't you ever put the holiday in front of the Holy One. Don't you ever put the holiday, don't you ever put more emphasis on the stuff than the Spirit of God. Don't you ever put your Mary on the gifts and not the Messiah. Have a Mary Messiah. That's what you need to have. Focus on the Messiah. Don't you ever put the gifts before God. If the gifts come before God, you've got the wrong holiday. You're celebrating and you're worshiping the wrong thing. Don't you ever put Christmas before Christ because you can't have Christmas without Christ. If you take away the tree, you should still be able to celebrate because you have Jesus. If you take away the lights and the decoration, can you still celebrate? Do you still have something to celebrate? We still have Jesus. If you take away the presence, if you've never got a thing, you can't take his presence out of your life. You still got a reason to celebrate, celebrate Jesus. You can take away the snowmen. You can take away the reindeer. You can take away the caroling. But if it isn't about Christ, then you shouldn't want Christmas. If it isn't about Christ, you shouldn't want Christmas because what you have is worshiping a Norse God, worshiping a Druid God, worshiping Wiccan gods. You're worshiping everything that God and Jesus did not come for you to worship. Wow. Without Jesus, for the believer, there is no reason to celebrate. When you leave this place, when you unwrap whatever package you received, from whoever you received it from, I just want you to remember that even without all the superficial stuff, you have a reason to celebrate. Yes. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy. Don't waste your emotions worried about what you didn't get. Worried about what you didn't give. Worried about what you wanted that you don't have because you have the greatest gift of all. You have Jesus. That's a reason to celebrate. Because with Jesus, you have more than enough. With Jesus, you can do all things. With Jesus, no one can stand against you. With Jesus, every need will be met. With Jesus, you have right to eternal life. With Jesus, you have relationship with God. With Jesus, you have greater than anything that this world could ever offer you. Remember that. Remember that. And on December 26th, and on February 12th, and on March 13th, and on July 12th, and every other day of the year, mm -hmm. 
when the holly is gone, yes. when the trees are down, where the decorations are stored back in the attic, you still have Jesus. You still have Jesus. Don't forget that Jesus is the reason for the season. Celebrate Jesus. Appreciate loving on each other. But don't you forget that the believer celebrates Christmas because we're celebrating the arrival of our Redeemer. Amen? Amen. Amen.